Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to take you through the settings that I use on my MD profiling machine. This was a highly requested video because so many of you got them as Christmas presents for the holidays. If you haven't told me what bassoon goodies you've gotten for the holidays, I would love to hear. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. But I am going to take you through the settings that I use on my MD profiling machine today. Okay guys, welcome to my studio. This is my MD profiling machine. I got the standard blue when I purchased it, largely because it was less money. This profiler is immensely affordable. It comes in at only $599, and it, you can get it in custom colors, but that pushes the price to $649, and me, I'm not overly picky with what color it is. I really like a good royal blue anyway, so I went ahead and kept it with blue. Now, so many of you guys have asked for the actual measurements of what I do with the profiling of the cane. Now, I set this machine when I first got it, and it was right around the time that I had been doing cane trials, not long after it. I think like six months later, I started doing the cane trials. So the settings on this are actually quite heavy. And I do this in large part to make sure that with this bed that goes along with it, that I make sure that I get a good solid foundation of a heart. I have been toying with the idea of getting a different platform and by getting a different platform, I would be able to control how thick it is at the back of the reed versus the taper to the tip because what I would like is to have more taken out of the back and less at the tip so that I make sure that I'm able to get a really good heart on a reed. And if you're wondering why I'm so picky about the heart on the reed, I do have a separate video about why your bassoon reed needs a heart and the importance of it. I also, uh, when I was doing the cane trials, was aware that a lot of the cane would probably be softer than I was using Used to working with and I wanted to make sure that I had enough space so that I could make even the softest cane work for me because a softer piece of cane I will leave heavier a good hard piece of cane I will actually end up taking more off of the cane also I'm not at a severely high altitude if I was at a higher altitude I would also set the machine differently so if you're looking at my numbers and thinking wow those are so high Erin what are you thinking that's because this is currently set for really soft cane and also to make sure that I get a good heart. Now, I probably will end up getting a different platform and then um, different numbers, and when I do all of that, I will film an update video, but this is where we're at for right now. You can see that the right number, which is directly under this point, is at about 1.5 and that this number that is directly under this point is at three. Now, by doing this, this gives me with a standard platform a tip that comes in just over 50 for a 29 blade 26 tube, and the back of the reed is going to come in at just over 100. So this gives me the ability to take cane off. I am never stuck in a position where I have a reed that is too thin and I can't put cane back on. So it does mean a bit of scraping. Now with this, because I do like a 29 blade and a 26 tube, I did set the machine in order to do that. And this is done with these little screw knobs up here at the top. So the right hand portion I have unscrewed so that there are 12 little notches out. And then once this is unscrewed, I tighten this down with a brass knob. And then on the left-hand side, I have it so that there are five little knobs that are undone and then tightened back down with that brass bolt. Um, so this gives me, again, that really nice center line that goes across the very center of the barrel so that I make sure that every time I end up with an easy spot to fold the cane over and I'm never overly worried about where that's at. The nice perk about the MD Profiler is that you can get an MD Shaper with it. Now, <laughs> I went ahead and did this. These are straight shapers that come with it. I went ahead and got an MD2. Now, I have to say that I bought this right around the time I first started blogging, and there are some differences that go with the MD Shaper versus the Fox Straight Shapers. So the MD Shaper 2 is really close to a Rieger 1A or a Fox 2. One of the things that you notice right off and that I know a lot of my friends have complained about, I'm not sure you can see it, but there is a divot notch that shows you exactly where to fold over on a Fox Shaper, and that does not exist on the MD Shaper. 
So this one just has a line, but it's very smooth to the touch. There's no groove or divot there. Another thing that is very different between the two is that the cane actually has to go in upside down from that of a fox shaper. When I first got this, I was just starting to blog and I do have a separate blog about the importance of the MD shaper and why it might be worth a splurge and putting the cane in upside down. So I will link to that. But the other thing that is also unique about it is that it does leave a little divot in the cane. This little spot right here is a circle. And this circle that is on the shaper will leave an indent in the cane. And that indent in the cane lines up directly with the indent on the barrel. And the bit that's nice about this is that it also has line markings for either side of the cane and also where the center of the spine is. So if you go ahead and you shape the cane, and then after you shape the cane, you put it directly on the barrel, those little notches will line up, and then you always have a spine that is centered. And by having a spine that is centered, then you take the guesswork out of it, getting a really good tip opening, which, you know, you never wanna put all the time and effort in and then find out that your tip is not actually centered. So I found that extremely helpful and part of the reason that I went ahead on the splurge. I do have a piece of shaped cane Okay, there we go. Now you can see that there is a little circle divot that is left in the tube of the cane so that I make sure that the spine is always centered. And again, this is not sponsored by Geese. That just happens to be uh, imprinted on the cane that I'm demonstrating. And this is not sponsored by MD either. I'm just sharing with you what I have and what works for me right now and what I will probably be changing because this cane is so hard and it has meant extra time for me scraping down. I have actually used this machine for going ahead and profiling prior to shaping. This has been really handy for some of the cane that I got that was a little bit long. The barrel is set up for a 122 millimeter piece of cane and it actually has dimensions on the side of it like a little ruler. But I did end up with some cane that was a little bit longer than that and so what I ended up doing because it did not fit inside my straight shapers is I used fold over shapers. So I found that really handy and I was able to profile the cane prior to shaping. Uh, I've got here a Pfeiffer foldover shaper, which again is super handy because it has a divot so you can make sure that you're getting the spine in the center. Or I also have used a Rieger 1A foldover shaper. Now, some people have different opinions on the shapers and which one you should be using because there's the idea that you stretch the cane if you use the foldover shaper. For me, I just needed a way to make sure that I was getting the spine centered and also making sure that I got the cane workable because um, I was profiling prior to shaping. I could do that on this machine. I will say though that this little knob had a tendency when I was profiling prior to shaping to uh, come loose a little bit. I don't know if I just didn't have this knob tightened down enough or if it was just the extra tension of profiling a full piece of cane versus a much narrower shaped already piece of cane. So I would love to hear from you guys. I mean, it might have just been me being overly ferocious profiling cane. I'm not sure about that, but um, that was an experience that I did have. Now, if you do get one of these machines, one of the fantastic things that it does come with is an extra blade on it. So if your blade starts to become dull and you know that you are going to need to change it, you've got the blade already on the machine. Now it is going to be bolted down just like the platform because you can change the platform out as well. And you might be having a moment of, oh wait, but I'm stuck because I don't have the tools. Oh my goodness, wait for it, wait for it. It has tools already for you on the bottom and they're easily accessible so that you can go ahead and change the blade out and the platform as needed and you don't have to remember what you did with the tools because knowing me, that is something that would be an issue. As we were talking about shapers, if you do want a shaper collection video, be sure to let me know because they are different and there are different theories that go behind each of the different shapes and how to use them effectively. So I could take you through all of my shapers if you're interested. If you're not, that's totally okay too because I'm just geeking out in this moment. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.